sending positive vibes to all truth seekers. In this video, I'm going to read to you a passage from the Book of Disquiet. I have on this channel uh, read a passage from the Book of Disquiet before. However, this is going to be a different passage. Uh, the author of this book is Fernando Pessoa, and he is writing about himself uh, with a different name. The name in the book is Bernardo Suarez, but he's really talking about his own experience living in Lisbon, Portugal, in his lonesomeness, his loneliness, his despair, his sorrow, yet his beautiful way of seeing the world. And uh, in the reason why I love this book is because Fernando Pessoa, from my personal opinion, was an enlightened person, meaning he knew his own nature and that his nature was the universe itself. He dipped in, he returned to his conscious awareness. He knew he, who he was at all times. He knew that he was the universe 24-7 and that he talked about the tedium, how living in the day-to-day -day life People who do this are extremely unconscious, unconscious of their own, their own awareness and their own nature. And uh, Fernando Pessoa is going, to t is going to show us, he's going to demonstrate for us, using the most beautiful prose, the most beautiful writing I have ever read in my entire life. He's going to have that talent, also describing his experience as an enlightened person. Um, another video I will discuss why I actually don't like the phrase enlightened person, but it basically is a person who recognizes their own nature and that and that, that nature is all of the universe. Okay, so in this little passage, it's going to be passage 76. In passage 76 in this book, he's going to discuss the limits of science and how this, uh, the philosophy of science today is that science is using human consciousness to discover the outside world almost exclusively, thinking about the physical world and that that is the only purpose of modern science. However, we're at the cusp, we're at the, at the, at the epitome of science and what that is is we're heading towards our own nature. We're heading towards knowing what we are. Rather than observing the outside world, rather than observing our bodies, we're beginning to see that our nature, our consciousness, is what is the consciousness of the entire universe. Okay, So this is the challenge of quantum mechanics and physics today, is figuring out what is human consciousness and what is the difference between our subjective experience and what the universe is in totality. For example, what created the Big Bang? And how is that related to you? How is the Big Bang, how is the creation of the Big Bang related to your subjective consciousness? Okay, and in this passage, he's going to refer to a tool. Okay, and this tool is going to be your consciousness. And that is going to be you witnessing your own mind, your ability to not control your mind, but watch your mind. You are going, your mind is going to occur within your own consciousness. Okay, so let's get started. Again, it's passage 76 from the book of Disquiet by Fernando Pessoa. <clears throat> I sometimes enjoy, in split fashion, thinking about the possibility of a future geography, of our self-awareness. I believe that the future historian of his own sensations may be able to make a precise science out of his awareness of his own soul. We are only in the beginnings of this difficult art. At this point, just an art. The chemistry of sensations, in its in its as yet alchemical stage. This scientist of tomorrow will pay special attention to his own inner life, 
subjecting it to analysis with a precision instrument created out of himself. I see no inherent obstacle to making out of steels and bronzes of thought, a precision instrument for self-analysis. I mean steels and bronzes that are really steels and bronzes, but of the mind. Perhaps that's the only way it can be. Perhaps it will be necessary to formulate the idea of a precision instrument, concretely visualizing it in order to understand a rigorous inner analysis. And it will surely be necessary to reduce the mind to some kind of real matter with a space for it to exist in. All of this depends on an extreme refinement of our inner sensations, which, when taken as far as they can go, will doubtless reveal or create in us a space just as real as the space that's occupied by material things, and that, come to think of it, has no reality. For all I know, this inner space may be just a new dimension of the other one. Perhaps scientific research will eventually discover that everything is dimensions of the same space, which is neither physical nor spiritual, so that in one dimension we live as bodies and in another as souls. And perhaps there are other dimensions where we live other, equally real facets of ourselves. Sometimes I enjoy, I enjoy getting lost in the useless meditation of just how far this research, research might take us. Perhaps it will be discovered that what we call God, so obviously on a plane beyond logic and space-time reality, is one of our modes of existence. A sensation of ourselves and another dimension of being. This seems to me perfectly possible. Perhaps dreams are yet another dimension in which we live. Or perhaps they're a cross between two dimensions. As our body lives in length, in breadth, and height, it may be that our dreams live in the ideal, in the ego and in space, in space through their visible representation, in the ideal through their non-material essence, and in the ego through their personal dimension as something intimately ours. The ego itself, the I in each one of us, is perhaps a divine dimension. All of this is complex and will no doubt be sorted out eventually. Today's dreamers are perhaps the great precursors of the ultimate science of the future. Of course, I don't believe in an ultimate science of the future, but that's beside the point. I periodically formulate metaphysics such as these, with the serious concentration of someone who's truly at work to forge science, and it's possible, as already suggested, that I may actually be forging it. I have to be careful not to take too much pride in this, since pride can undermine the strict impartiality of scientific objectivity. Again, he's talking about that it's not his enlightenment, it is our enlightenment, coming together as a species to enlighten ourselves. Therefore, a person cannot become enlightened. It is enlight Enlightenment is the nature of us. So it's figuring out what we are, going deep, letting go what we are. So to end, the, to end this video, Breathing in and breathing out, enlightenment. Breathe in, I, and exhale, am. I am. I am peace.